episode 139. Well, it's a lot of organization and a lot of um, planning. And, you know, just over the years, we've tweaked the different systems on what works for us. And, you know, I'm hoping I can share some of those ideas with the with the tribe today on, uh, you know, what works for us. And, and everybody can listen and, you know, maybe they can take away one thing and... Welcome, aftermarketers, to Remarkable Results Radio. Listen to learn just one thing from today's episode on your journey to remarkable results. Hello, aftermarketers throughout North America and around the world. Carm Capriato here, and I hope this episode 139 finds you going strong. I've titled this episode, The Little Shop That Could, with Jeff Buckley. Now, this episode is brought to you by Federal Mogul Motor Parts and Garage Gurus. For serious technical training and support, online, on-site, and on-demand, Garage Gurus is everything you need to know. Find out more at this address, fmgaragegurus.com. Hey, ever wonder how you can improve your automotive aftermarket business? Well, you're actually in the right place to learn from people like you how they achieved and executed their success. Listen and learn each week and strive to take just one thing away with you. One thing that sparks an idea or action within you that you can implement or even pass on. Adapt these ideas to your needs and continue to excel in your business and your life. Now meet Jeff Buckley and the little shop that could. Jeff is in business with his wife Candace at my father's shop in Midlothian, Texas. Yes, it's Jeff and Candace. They are the business. I was fascinated by what Jeff has accomplished in his business tenure. He uses Mitchell One as his management system, is beta testing Mala's Tech Pro, and has been in a Wagner Brake commercial for the new OEX pad with Mike Rowe. He is a proud family man, and he and Candace have a unique thing going. You'll get the feel right away why this husband and wife team make it happen together and how busy they are in their striving business, just husband and wife. The little shop that could. Now here we go. Nice to be with Jeff Buckley from my father's shop in Midlothian, Texas. Hello, Jeff Buckley. How are you? Are you ready to share your remarkable results? Yes, Carm. I sure am. Thank you very much for reaching out to me. It's kind of a big deal and an honor to be on this show. And Well, thank you very much. Wow. Um, let me see. Who will have to pay a dollar for that? I don't know. <laughs> Great to have you. And, uh, and we have so much to talk about. Uh, you know, it, it's amazing to think that you were a huge spokesman for Wagner OEX through Federal Mogul. Ironically, you know, hell, they're my sponsor, but I have a chance to, you know, get on the YouTube and see, you know, get get some behind-the-scenes stuff on what they're doing. And, you know, Jeff Buckley kept coming up, and I kept seeing you in videos with Mike Rowe, and I've seen you on ads. And I said, you know what, I, I sure don't want to look like I'm promoting my sponsor, but Jeff Buckley seems like a pretty cool guy, and, and we need to talk to him. So by no means did anyone say, you know, please interview Jeff Buckley. This was totally on my own. And when you and I had a chance to do our pre-call, uh, I, I don't know, it went on for two or three hours. I can't quite remember because <laughs> you just, I learned I, I learned things I didn't even want to know, but I, but I did. So it was great. <laughs> but the biggest thing that I learned the most incredible thing that I learned, which is what we have to talk about, is that you're the little shop that could. And it just blew me away. Here I'm, uh, everyone, I'm, I'm talking to Jeff and I'm saying, well, you know, how big is your shop and how many techs do you have? And he says, Carm, I just want to re remind you, it's just me and the wife. And I'm saying, no, 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 this just, just can't possibly be. And he says, Carm, it's just me and the wife. And I said, I've never done an interview like this. I've never talked to a person like you that's so into systems and so into training and so into what's going on. So I've done too much talking. And now, Jeff, I have to ask you, how in the heck do you and your wife get it done? Well, it's a lot of organization and a lot of um, planning. And, you know, just over the years, we've tweaked the different systems on what works for us and you know, I'm hoping I can share some of those ideas with the with the tribe today yeah, on, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, what works for us. And, and everybody can listen and, you know, maybe they can take away one thing and maybe I can uh, reach out and give some ideas to the industry on, uh, you know, some some 
things that I say that that can can work better. You must just go uh, like uh, like the Energizer Bunny from you know minute <laughs> minute one to minute end every day, right? Yeah, and and I don't know who does that more, my wife or or, or myself, because she'll get up in the morning and and uh, like right now we're you know 100 degrees, so she'll turn on the air conditioners and get the computers all set up and look and see uh, what's coming in, and uh, she'll uh, print out some copies of the of the tickets. Um, like if we have a bunch of oil changes, and you saw, I sent you a picture the other day. She'll send that out. She'll set that out by the filters and have all the stuff lined up. So when I finally do show up for work. Here's this picture he sent me. There's like five oil filters, six oil filters right in a row, and they each have a piece of paper coming out of them. And they must be what, the work order? Yeah, that's a copy of it. And, and what she does is uh, she puts it on there so that, number one, we know we have that filter in stock. And number two, we know uh, how much oil that, that particular one takes and what grade and and uh, what brand that we're putting in it. And, you know, I can look at it and verify uh, that it's it's the right one. And, you know, it has the information on there as far as the customer's name and the vehicle. And it also lists uh, all the work on there. Of course, we keep all the work on the computers, but when I'm standing right there by the lift doing an oil change, everything is right there, so it's quick and easy, and, you know, the whole idea is if you save steps, then, you know, you're a little bit faster. Right, exactly. So, you guys have worked out these systems. So, tell me, what what would you uh, say is your most important system or process that has made this husband and wife team work so efficiently? Well, that's kind of a difficult question because if you say what has made uh, the the husband and wife team work so uh, efficiently and so well together, that would have to be the Lord and and uh, you know our love for each other. Because people come in all the time and they say, uh, "How in the world can y'all work together all day long?" And you know, we've been we've been doing this here at this location for over 22 years. But then the other part is that, you know, we're just cooperative with each other as far as, um, you know, we look at different things and and it's not a a battle or a fight to say, hey, we need to add this or or, hey, this this might work better for us. She goes to SEMA with us with me and we do that every year. And we'll look at all the different things that are out there. You know, when we were looking to add a management system, Mm -hmm. you know, we said, hey, um, and we went out there and looked at the different ones and we chose Mitchell one. And, uh, you know, that that's kind of the basis to to uh, help you start doing your job better to Mm -hmm. start being more organized. And then, you know, Mitchell one has a on demand where you have the repair information. Right. And then, so that's all available to you. So it's all together. And then by teaching her to uh, look up the stuff and she can look up a lot of the stuff for me. And then she calls me over there when she has it ready. So that saves my time on having to research and having to look it up. Say she's the service writer in, in many of the shops, and service writers are responsible for, you know, X amount of techs. And so she, you and I, you and your wife, and her, her name is? Candace. Candace. Great. It's the Jeff and Candace show. All right. So she really knows your every move, and she really knows your every need. Pretty much. And then... Uh... She's also learned over the years, you know, what, what the different vehicle needs are and what the different uh, systems are and what, you know, if one's coming in for oil change, then we're going to do this. And and then, uh, you know, keeps track of, of the maintenance. Okay, when's the last time we did it? So what else do we need to look at? You know, looks up, you know, where you have the mileage to say, okay, at recommended mileages, these items are due. And so we look at that before the vehicle ever gets in. And then, but we don't rely on mileage base, okay, at 60,000 miles, the manufacturer recommends uh, rotating tires, uh, doing the oil change, doing the, the air filter, doing the cabin air filter. We actually look at them because, you know, someone might have just bought new tires, and so they don't need them rotated. Sometimes they'll go through uh, a uh, tire store that, that does free tire rotation, so they don't need to pay us to do that. You know, we may have done the, the air filter last time, or uh, it hasn't been a, a, a year for a cabin air filter. And so we actually look at the at the items rather than just rely strictly on, hey, based on this mileage, this is what's due. I'm talking with Mike Zralik, a technical product specialist with Federal Mogul Motor Parts. So you have this this van, and it's the Guru on the Go van, 
and it's all nicely decked out, and you you drop by for lunches and learns. How do uh, shops get a chance to get that van to come to their place? Well, they can, of course, call into our um, guru hotline and, and request it. They can talk to their parts distributor. You know, and, and through that channel, we can go out and do some training or even with us out in the field. You know, if they see us, we do various warehouse distributor type shows, many different events. We're out there everywhere. Just come by and ask and we'll be more than happy to come by. Hey, Mike, if I said you were a champion for Federal Mogul Motor Parts, would I be right? You betcha. So give me an example. I live, eat, breathe Federal Mogul on a daily basis. Um, you know, growing up, I being in, in the racing industry, I knew a lot about Moog. I loved Moog. Felpro, same thing. To go out and be able to talk about a company this big, this strong, it makes me happy every single day. I, I'm so excited to do it on a day-in and day-out basis. What are technicians saying after you're done with your presentation? When can you come back? They, they want more day in and day out. They want more, and, and you have more to give. You've got so many key product lines in the industry. Oh, we, we have a ton of product lines and a ton of training that's available, you know, with those product lines and, and on a technical side, too. How dazzled are the techs to see that compression-loaded ball joint with the pre-installed integral dust boot? They come unglued. They are so excited about that because less frustrations, you know, they've been dealing with issues in the field of damaging that boot during installation and it just, it makes it so much easier to put in. And it's a beautiful piece. Federal Mogul Motor Parks' Garage Gurus is your go-to source for the vehicle training, technology, and answers you need to keep your next job on track. On site, online, or on demand, the gurus are here to help keep your business and your career on the road to success. Visit fmgarageguru.com. So you're in an affluent area, you told me, um, in Midlothian, Texas. And is does that make business just a little easier or a little tougher? Well, there's there's actually several things that have made our, our business easier. Number one is the area that we're in. Uh, number two is is just how we do our business. Uh, we don't do a lot of advertising, and so if you come here, then more than likely someone else has recommended you, right. or you're uh, a relative or a friend of, of you know of, of another customer. So when you come here, you already have uh, better expectations as to uh, what service we provide. Um, um, I don't want to say our honesty, but you know, you you know that we're honest, and and uh, we try to do the best job that we can to repair your vehicle. And if it's something that I can't do, then you know I let you know. Hey, I don't I don't do that, or because like I don't do engine work anymore. Right. And then it's, it's you know we send that somewhere else. But uh, because of that, and then we're blessed because of the the area that we're on. It is more affluent uh, homes and. We get tend to get newer vehicles. Um, you know, we don't always have the, the older ones, and and that makes my job a little bit easier. And then, as far as um, you know, if if you're working on a Mercedes Benz and you park it out front um, at the front of the line instead of you know close to the shop, and then everybody's driving by that has Mercedes Benz, they see another Mercedes Benz in there. Then all of a sudden you're a Mercedes, you know, uh -huh. you're a Mercedes Benz shopper. You can work on them. It's the same if you put a BMW out there. If you put a, you know, uh, um, because people see the nicer cars if they see one of theirs. I mean, there'll be some days where um, I've taken pictures where I have three Corvettes in the shop. Today's a Corvette day, you know, and it's it's just kind of strange how it works out like that. But you know, will you take those pictures, Jeff? Yes, I, I, we take them and we post them on the Facebook. I know my listener, our listener, the podcast listener, is so curious as to how a husband and wife team run such a great business. And, and you're busy based on everything that I see. Uh, you told me, you know, a, a, a new piece of equipment you recently bought. I mean, that, that means you guys are really rocking. And I find it so fascinating, just so fascinating that uh, it's the little shop that could. Now, tell me, what is the... Um, uh, the, the most recent piece of equipment that you bought, and why'd you buy it? 
the most recent piece, I mean, right now we're beta testing the uh, the Mali Tech Pro, and so we had bought the uh, uh, Goliath cart uh, with the touchscreen uh, tablet and a touchscreen uh, monitor specifically for the purpose of, of having that come in so that when the customer comes in, this uh, Mali Tech Pro is just such an amazing diagnostic tool. Uh, it can uh, go in and and quickly uh, diagnose the car, but it looks at all the modules. It goes in and checks everything, not just, hey, why is my check engine light on? And because we have it hooked up to the uh, big touchscreen monitor right there, uh, specifically so when the customer's standing there, I want to show them, look, I didn't just read your check engine light. I scanned your entire vehicle and all of the modules. See how many computers you have on there? Everything that we do is is trying to educate the customers and uh, build our credibility with them just a little bit more. So uh, as they can see the different things, and, and I say, uh, okay, your check engine light is on for this reason. Oh, and by the way, there's an issue with uh, one of your mirrors or uh, one of your seat belts, and they look at you like, uh... I didn't ask you, what do you mean something's wrong with my mirror? And, and when you can expand and, and give them more than what they asked for, it, it builds credibility with them. And you're showing them that you care about their vehicle, not just, hey, they're another customer. And that's probably why our business has, has built so well and, and because we, we try to show the customers that we care for them and we care for their – can you see Candace there? She just stuck around the corner. Hello, Candace. <laughs> Hi, Candace. Oh, man. She, so, she doesn't like to be on TV. But anyways, we try to show them that, number one, we're, we're trying to educate them, and number two, we're trying to show them that, you know, how to take better care of their vehicle so the vehicle lasts longer, yeah, even yeah. though we're – we're a little bit more affluent area, you know, and when you're talking about a fifty, sixty thousand dollar car, that's still a lot of money. It is. It is a lot of money, but you're you're showing that you're going the extra mile. That's great. Hey, Jeff. Jeff, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? I guess my wife says sometimes you have uh, two ears and one mouth. Listen a little bit more. Oh. <laughs> I recall my wife uh, <laughs> making a big deal about that too. <laughs> that's universal to most of us guys, isn't it? Uh, and that, you know what? Actually, that's really, really good advice to be given. So, so any good habits that you and your wife work on together to to create the uh, the kind of business that you have? Good habits. We try to um, work to our strengths. She uh, is is very caring and. And, um, and, and, and can listen and, um, uh, uh, compassionate and she has a, a, a servant's heart. And so as a customer comes in, you know, if I look at them and, and they look like they're had a rough day or, or something's on their mind, or they just seem a little bit off, I'll tell them, Hey, you know, don't take that one home. Let me, uh, work on it while they wait. And you talk to them, you know, and, and, uh, you know, find out what's going on. See if, see if there's, you know, something that, that they need to share, that they need to get off their, their, uh, their heart or, or just, just need to, um, vent. And, um, we, we have a lot of single, single, uh, women, a lot of, uh, single moms, a lot of widows and, and, uh, Candace does an excellent job on on taking care of them and and listening to them and and you know my my gifts are are working on the car and and being able to to figure the different deals out and and um, you know I can I can read something and remember that and so all the time I'm I'm going through and uh, all the emails all the trade magazines all the all the information I'll just scan down through it and and try to pick out the bits and pieces that, that I need to, you know, that are important. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, you know, our, our, our best habit is, is trying to educate the customer and, and show them that, you know, that we actually care about their, their vehicle. And so how, how important is social media for you? Well, 
you know, you had asked me, hey, do, do we have a website? And, you know, several years ago, it was real important to have a website. Uh, when we talk about, you know, the, the little shop that could, we look at what works for us. And that's what a, a lot of your mm-hmm. viewers and listeners need to do is, is look at what works for them. Some of them, uh, a website works for them and, and customers can go on and, right. and set their appointments and, and see the different various deals. But as you look at, you you know, I try to look at, at, at what we do, um, and, and you can look at, at what you do. Do you go online and, and look up a bunch of websites, or do you, uh, you know, because now when you Google something, it, it doesn't have to go to a website. It can go to a Facebook site, and we we tend to use our Facebook more like several yeah. years ago yeah. with what the um, the the website would be, and we'll post little uh, things on there. We'll post a little picture. Um, people like to see positive things. They like to see cute things, and that's why my granddaughter is on there uh, uh, sometimes because she'll get more hits than than I will. People say they put the wrong star on TV. <laughs> we. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's really good. We're going to get there in a minute. But yeah, you and I, I think, connected on social a while back. And I, I do love to follow the uh, my future guests and my current guests and my alumni guests on, on social. And uh, it's, it's a great interaction. And I think you can find out a lot about people. And obviously, through the word of mouth and the referrals that you get. Uh, it's just working. It's working great for you. Jeff, how's technology imp- impacting the business? Well, it's it, we made a decision several years ago that if we were going to stay in the business, we we had to make some some decisions to uh, make some changes in, and some investment. You know, because when you talk about we buy a new piece of equipment, we buy a new big piece of equipment every year, and we try to we're aggressive and we try to pay for that in in one year. Uh, so that we know what we're going to get the next year, whether it be a lift, whether it be a, a diagnostic tool. That's, mm-hmm. you know, some of the tools are three, four, five thousand dollars. Yeah. And um, in training, and so that's a conscious effort by me to go on and look for different online trainings. I was doing that way back before, you know, even the reps will come around and go, hey. Where'd you find this? How did you know about this? And and even the you know the the rep that handles the the product would uh, I would find out stuff before that particular rep would know. And and it's just because I would go out and and find it. So it's real important on you know to keep up with technology because it's changing all the time. So you're all the time looking for you know the new things. Yeah, and yeah. that was just a decision we'd made. You know, several years ago, that if we were going to stay in business, and we, you know, we had to yeah, keep up with yeah. technology, we had to keep up with the training. Well, I have to say, Jeff Buckley from my father's shop in Midlothian, Texas. So here he is. He's in Ratchet and Wrench. He's on the uh, Remarkable Results Radio podcast now, and of course, to you know, <laughs> to hit it all, <laughs> you were on commercials for Wagner's OEX pads. And um, I, I know you shared with me the story that your rep knew you and they needed to have someone to test the product. And, you know, they, they, they found a lot of uh, shops to test it. But how you got creamed up to the top to be on the commercials with Mike Rowe and to, uh, what, do a couple of days of recording, I think, out in California. Give us a couple of minutes on how that happened. Well, that's, that, that was just like a God thing, I guess, because... Uh, you know, we were we were testing it, and one of the things that they wanted was they wanted feedback. And so, on every uh, set of pads that I would install, I'd go on the line and 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 do the feedback. And mm-hmm. and I guess uh, you know I did enough of them and and put enough feedback that they noticed. And <clears throat> so, of the over four hundred techs that used it, they contacted me. And my understanding was they contacted probably about ten different guys to to see if they were interested in, in doing some advertising, and they whittled that down um, to three. And when uh, they flew me out to California, there was a, a young guy, a middle-aged guy, and an old guy. Uh, I won't tell you which one I was, but <laughs> <laughs> they, those guys were saying, oh, let's look at the demographics. Who are they trying to reach? And and uh, then they had wanted uh, to see how you interact with uh, Micro, and they brought brought micro out to the we were at, sitting at a little picnic table and the one of the guys starts talking about he had been an eagle scout and i was like oh my gosh i gotta say something and 
I, I had noticed that he was in um, New York the week before with uh, his mom and dad at CNN doing an interview, and the Pope was in town, and I thought that was kind of a big deal. And I asked him, hey, did you get to see the Pope and your mom and dad? And, and he uh, he started telling me about all the U.N. was in session, and the president was there. And New York City, which is crowded anyways, got shut down and, and even more crowded and harder to get along with, so they got out. and. I guess uh, they just liked how I talked with them, and and um, they they chose me the next day to to be in one of the commercials. They did two commercials, and when he he came out there, he's just the nicest guy, and 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 uh, he walked up and he said, "Hey, Jeff, you, you know what's going on?" And I was like, "Mike, I don't have a clue. I just flew out here kind of by faith and hoping this would be a good thing, and it's just turned into a really, really and it, good and thing. it was. And you know, I I had a chance to relook at the commercials that are online on YouTube. They're about a couple of minutes long, and uh, the the one uh, th- there's two of them with you, I believe. Am I right? We we did a commercial, and then the other one is actually classified as a video, and and, and that was a funny deal because uh, that was. He, but wait a minute, that was the one where he was pulling the tape measure out. That was the commercial where we were measuring fifty feet. Yeah, and uh, you know you watch it, and it looks like it's just so natural. That probably took hours to do. Well, and it, it was funny because, you know, I didn't have a clue what was going on. And he said, you know what's going on? And, and I said, no. And he goes, okay, well, I want you to, to say a little bit more on this. And he writes some stuff down. And and as I start talking, they're like, okay, that's that's too long. And, and so the idea that they had kind of just progressively changed because it didn't all roll off the tongue and roll off, you yeah, know, how yeah. they had it on their little storyboards. Sure. And so he kind of changed it, and, and he actually let me have some input on because I would say something, and he'd go, oh, okay. And then uh, uh, at the end, he's 50 feet away, and, and he's bending down measuring, and, and he's standing up, and they're bringing this, this truck up real slow and, and uh, stopping it. And, you know, with the sound guy was going – making a screech sound and because the truck was just easing up there and and he walked in and we were doing this uh during the day in the afternoon well they were doing cameras and everything and and i thought we were doing it and and actually it was like practice and then when Uh the sun got just right we did it but at the end he was standing there and and the truck comes up and and they had a stunt man there and a professional stunt driver and i said hey hey mike that truck's gonna have to come pretty fast is that why you got the stunt guy and he said oh no 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 we just we just add that in the sound and i was like oh you mean like we're acting and and he goes, yeah. And I thought, okay, well, why would I just let a truck pull up on Mike Rowe? Why wouldn't I say, hey, Mike, you know, watch out. And so he's down there doing his part, and I'm holding the tape measure, and I'm thinking, well, what would I say if if I saw a truck coming at him? And then he, he hollers, uh, the line was, it's a big deal. And he looks over at me, and I'm supposed to holler, it's a big deal. And uh, the truck eased up there, and he, he he stands up and looks right in the camera and says, "It's a big deal." And I and he they look back at me, and I go, "Kind of a big deal." Like, oh my gosh, that truck almost hit you, you know? And it stopped. Good thing it stopped fifty feet sooner. And, and uh, he was like, "Oh my uh, gosh, I love that." How I much fun? That. How much fun? Great memories. Great story. Thank you so much for sharing. Now, has anyone from Hollywood contacted you to be in any more? <laughs> no, I wish they would. Hey, looking back, Jeff, look back. What are you the most proud of? I think I'm the most proud of um, our children. You know, we've raised, because we're a a small mom and pop shop, we were able to, uh, my wife was able to to work with me, work in the shop. And so we were able to raise four children and and spend the time with them that, that they needed, you know, and go to their different events. And, you know, we made a decision, hey, this is what we're going to do and how we're going to raise them. And, and I think I'm most proud of, of, of my children um, and what they've, you know, turned into and become, you know, partly because of the decisions that we made on on uh, how we run our business. And Great, and, great, great. Glad to hear that. Uh, put your... Um vision hat on here next three to five years where do you think you're going to be what are you going to be doing um 
Well, hopefully, you know, I'll get somebody from Hollywood to call me, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I would, I would like to do more of, of like what we're doing right now, being able to share, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've shared ideas in the past, just giving them away to, to all these different ones that, that come around, yeah. but there's a lot of things that the industry um, as a whole, it's like, okay, because of all the changes and stuff, and, you know, everybody's talking about, hey, um, you know, how do we get the, the, the help coming in? And how do we get the the uh, you know train the new techs and everything and and you know there's a lot of things that that you know in the next thirty five years I wish that you know I could I could reach out and be involved in some of these groups that that can have an effect on it as far as like one thing I see which is just you know. It's, it might be kind of kind of weird or off the wall, but and and I'd like to see some of the grants going to and and scholarships going to the shops, so the shops can bring in these young people and train them like you know interns and instead of them going to the the different uh, schools and stuff and and getting some you know general training, um, and they're paying you know they're paying somebody just you know the the fees to yeah, to yeah. to be taught. Well, let's let the the shops teach you know. And then we're teaching them more what what we need to know. There's a new group out, ASLA, um, from Mike Davidson and the American Skilled Labor Association, ASLA. And he finally got approval from the Department of Labor. And what that means is you'll be able to hire an apprentice and the DOL will pay you a portion of the wage, I think up to half, and you can bring on somebody and develop yourself a new tech. So it's kind of up to the idea of you'd like the scholarship monies to go to help you, you know, build an apprentice program. Mm-hmm. Mike's Mike's uh, he's been working on it for a long, long time and built uh, along with um, Bob Cooper from Elite Worldwide. And a couple of those guys in that group got together and Mike did all the legwork to get this approved by the Department of Labor of the U.S. Department of Labor. So uh, there's a big webinar coming out sometime in August. So um, I, I've actually spread the word through my newsletter about that. Hey, I've had a blast. We could go on for two hours. Hell, <laughs> m- maybe you could even, you know, write a column on my website and just share your great ideas. I mean, who knows? Because we're just we're creating every day as we go. So I had I had a blast, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Buckley from Midlothian, Texas, from my father's shop. Jeff, give us some great words to live by. Some great words to live by is is treat the the people like you would like to be treated. If I could just give you one example, this afternoon we had uh, someone from a charitable organization call, and uh, her uh, comment was, oh, my gosh, y'all are harder to get a hold of than it is to get my children to clean their room. Now, that's a funny story, and that's that can refer to our business as far as, okay, you know, like like uh, how we, we, we treat people or we watch them as far as, you know, hey, that's a funny story to share, but no one got a benefit out of that. Right. You know, because she didn't get a, a charitable contribution, and and the the people that could have benefited from didn't get nothing because of of her remark. Yeah. And so when we look at something and say, oh, hey, that person has a noise. Hey, well, you got a can rolling around in the back of your your vehicle. It's like, well, pick up that can, put it in a box, and then go drive again. Yeah. And then if that corrects the problem, now you know. You see, you've addressed it. You've talked to them. Everybody's attitude is 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 corrected now. Then that might be a lifelong customer. You handled it right. You, you you thought of the other person before you said anything. You know, people need to have filters today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And every once in a while you can hear people, oh, they didn't have their filter turned on. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's one of my best my best expressions is never never think out loud. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That uh, that was a great lesson I learned many, many years ago. Hey, thanks, Emil. I appreciate you uh, coming on and sharing your great stories, the little shop that could. You and Candace, uh, best luck to you, and we'll be in touch. Thank you very much, Carm. Thank you for reaching out to us and allowing us to share just a little bit about our shop on, on your program and, and uh, say hi to the tribe for us. Hey, guys and gals, Carm here, and thanks so much for listening. Find additional show notes on Jeff Buckley from My Father's Shop, his bio, and links to his company. Find them exclusively on the show's episodes page on the Remarkable Results Radio website, and it's so easy to find. Just key in remarkableresults.biz slash E139. E stands for episode, and 139 is the number. That's also the place, yeah, where you can subscribe to be an insider, 
and get the pulse on every new episode release. And you can also find top industry links and resources. Hey, I really do appreciate your engagement with the podcast and would ask that you help spread the word. Your help is needed to unite our industry, and I'm so grateful for your support. Thanks. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from another inspiring aftermarket professional. Until next time.